This is Harding Football with Coach Ronnie Huckabee. Hi and welcome to Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee, the homecoming edition after the Bisons, a 51-6 victory over Southeastern Oklahoma on Saturday to run the Bison record to 7-1 on the year. And Coach, just great weather, uh, tremendous crowd, tailgating uh, was uh, very popular early on, Coach, and I think everybody was ready for homecoming Saturday. It was such a beautiful day. I don't know if you could draw it up any better. And of course, uh, with the result that we ended up with on the football field, it was pretty good too. Yeah, when we get a chance, uh, you know, I drove up and I had to have my wife drop me off at the front gate because there was no parking because everyone was enjoying all the fun on the lawn in front of the Gaines Athletic Center. And that's become quite a tradition. It's, it's really awesome. And we've talked about it in previous shows this year, how excited we are about the tailgating culture and, and uh, big, part of, big part of making game day special team getting ready to come out and uh, always the homecoming queen, a big part of the celebration. And we'd like to congratulate Ms. Hillary Dykus, 2014 Harding University homecoming queen. I know every university is so proud of, of their homecoming traditions, and Harding University obviously very proud of its homecoming traditions. 55th homecoming game, and with all the circumstances going around, with all the excitement, you crown a homecoming queen and all the activities that go on all week, but the football coach wants to win on homecoming Saturday, and a big win for your football team to get to 7-1 and one now on the season. Well, one of our motivations, obviously, is when we have homecoming, we always have a lot of old players back on campus and what they want to do is they want to see I, you know I, I, it's important to win but what they want to know is is the bison spirit still alive in these players the the, the spirit that's been uh, evident throughout the program's history with the way we've competed uh, the never quit uh, very physical get after it hey we're proud of those guys and win or lose that's what they want to see and so I was very pleased that, that our football team uh, demonstrated those characteristics in a big way on Saturday. And we have a lot of exciting highlights to look at. We have a punt return for a touchdown. Uh, the defense played outstanding and 51 points on the board for the Bisons on Saturday, on homecoming Saturday. And we'll start with first half highlights right after this. Healing takes time. It also takes knowledge and expertise. Here we learn to reach out to and care for others through the application of medicine and true compassion. We understand that our mission is to take our training and abilities out into the world where they can and do heal the lives of others. For us, that mission began in a place of faith, learning, and living. Harding University. I'm a big believer in the power of we. We can tackle the tough challenges we face and build community through service and volunteering. We gotta hold on to what we got. It's time for you to raise your hand. Go to serve.gov and get involved in something you believe in. How will you raise your hand when they call your name? Are you with me? We weren't born to fight. Hi and welcome to Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee, the Bisons, with a victory on Saturday on homecoming Saturday. And Coach, your defense has been so very good early on. So many times we see the opponent get the football first, and uh, here we see the defense forcing a turnover early. Yeah, this is very reminiscent of a week ago. Uh, the, the critical turnover against Henderson was Dennis stripping the ball and Trindle recovering it. And they do the same. We get the ball back. Second play from scrimmage, we run the triple. And uh, nice touchdown with Ahmad Scott carrying it into the end zone. And we had some fantastic blocking on that play uh, inside, especially from Torrey Day on the free safety. We come back. This is Zach Shelley. Similar play. Uh, Zach is really close to, to staying in bounds and taking that into the end zone. We come back with the first phase, the dive to Romo. Uh, great gain on that play. 
And this is the option again to Zach Shelley. Great blocking out in front of him. Zach takes it into the end zone in a walk-in touchdown, and we're up 14 to nothing. Tremendous start. And I told our offensive coaches uh, and, our, and basically our team, I'm not sure if we've ever had a more dominating offensive performance than that day. And this is fourth down. Our defense comes up big again in short yardage situations and gets the turnover. And uh, we come back, run the first phase of the triple again, hand the ball off to Petty. That converted a third down. Exactly. Uh, we, you know, this is the fumble on the trap play. Uh, don't, don't think we ever really got the ball on that play. It was just kind of a, uh, a boo-boo that, that uh, you know, we, were, we were down about. But the good thing is that was the only turnover we had in the ball game. And here is the first of two 99-yard drives for your football team on the day. And this is fantastic. You know, Petty gets hit, you know, pretty close to the line of scrimmage, breaks that tackle, cuts back, and, you know, that almost a 50-yard gain on that play. Great blocking uh, right there at the point of attack. And this is run the triple to the tight end side with the, the second phase, the quarterback keep. And Keenan tucks it up in there and gets about 15 yards. Come back with the tall, with the pitch uh, to the fullback, to the B-back, and that's to Romo. Good blocking out in front of him. I think that was an eight-yard gain. Great run coming, I think, right here from Jason Aller. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm ahead of myself. That's all right. That's all right. This is uh, Romo on the off-tackle play, and he gets good blocking. He breaks a tackle, as he normally does. Here comes Jason. Then we come back and run the triple. We get the seam right there. That was a beautifully executed triple option, and we get the pitch, and... and uh, you know, here we go again. That's a, that's a missed extra point. John's first of the year. We had a little bit of a problem with the hold. And, uh, but, you know, John has been so steady with those uh, extra points all year long. And here comes maybe the most exciting play of the afternoon. Well, you know, we're up 20 to nothing right here. And, uh, but, you know, we still are, the game's somewhat in doubt. And then they kick it to Darius Lane. We have known all year that if Darius got a chance, there's a great chance he was going to take one to the house, and he did. He had a, got a tremendous block on that play from Colby Webb and and, uh, and from some others. And Darius is just so talented with the ball in his hands. That was a great, great momentum boost for us. And uh, 27 to nothing at, at that point, then Southeastern Oklahoma would come back and score right before the half to make it 27 to 6 at the half. But, Coach, that's two weeks in a row in which special teams gives you a big lift in the first half. You had a kickoff return for a touchdown last right. week and now the punt return uh, the, the first since uh, 2002 right. coming this week and that's uh, you know that, that's so exciting to see and what you know we have continued to preach to our team and our guys have done a fantastic job of buying into it is that we want to be at our best game 10 you know we want to continue to improve and I, I think everybody that knows us could watch and say yeah those we have really improved in our return game over the course of the season, and, and the evidence of that has been back-to-back -to -back touchdowns scored on kickoff return and on punt return. We're really pleased with where we are, and we're going to keep working on it. So the Bisons at this point in the football game lead 27-6 at the half. Stay with us. We'll come back and look at second-half highlights after this. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, <clears throat> I made it. The next 30 seconds can save you a lot of money. Just do your laundry in cold and stick to full loads. Auto sleep your computers. Plug your gadgets in a power strip and switch it off when you're done. Head it out, turn back your thermostat by 10 degrees. And drive sensibly. The more energy you save, the more money you save. Find other great tips at energysaver.gov. Welcome back to Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. The Bison's up 27-6 at the half. Southeastern Oklahoma getting set to kick it away to the Bisons, but they recovered an onside kick. And then I thought uh, your defense did a great job, Coach, to, to stop them after they had a little momentum at this point. In the no game. doubt about it. You know, we like getting that second half kickoff and, and try to take it in and score, but they 
tricked us a little bit, and uh, so proud of our defense. Dennis with a great interception, did a great job of uh, high pointing the ball. We come back, run off tackle with Romo, and he does his thing as he normally does. Uh, almost a 60-yard run right there, and we come back, and Petty's in the ball game, and we run the trap, and Petty finishes a three-play drive uh, with two long runs by our B-backs. Of course, Petty was the John Proc Award winner for the Outstanding Homecoming Player. We're so proud of him and, and his performance on, on Saturday. There were a bunch of guys that were in the running for that. We had a lot of, lot of top performances. This Ice is, is at this point leading to 34 to 6. Right, and this is a Benj Benjamin Shields with a great pick. He read the quarterback's eyes all the way, stepped in front of it, and uh, that, that was a tremendous football play. Benjamin has really played well for us this year in a lot of phases of the game. We come back with the pitch. This is Zach Shelley with the spin move. You can see him keep his legs driving. I think that was about a 14-yard gain. Great run by Zach. He also had some super blocking out in front of him. Our slots blocked unbelievable on Saturday. This is the off-tackle play to Romo. He gets in the end zone, and I think that puts us 41-6 to with uh, John's extra point. Yeah, and rolling well right here, and obviously your team has played so well in the third quarter, just dominated the third quarter on Saturday. Uh, you know, we love, to, we love to talk about that third lap. You know, the, the used to be the old adage in track was the third lap of the mile. That's when you separate yourself from, from your competition, and... Uh, we're proud of our guys. This is Matt Tennyson with the fullback off tackle. Matt's from Hazen, Arkansas, one of our unsung heroes that doesn't get a lot of credit, and it was tremendous for him to take that one to the house. And, uh, you know, our old guys were so excited celebrating with him that it cost us 15 yards. <laughs> <laughs> it, into the fourth quarter now, and that puts the Bisons up 48 to six. You were able to put some pressure on Polite uh, on the afternoon. We saw the, the sack just a few moments ago from Trayvon Vic Bigelow. Right. We had three sacks on the afternoon, and you know our guys did a great job of putting pressure on him. That, this is Frank Herbert. Frank had two interceptions on Saturday. That was a beautiful one right there. And uh, we ended up with five, gaining five turnovers, and uh, we lost one. This is this is the 40-yard field goal by John. John has not had a lot of opportunities to kick field goals this year, so we were proud he got that chance. But back to the turnovers, we are, uh, you know, we we are currently leading the nation in turnovers caused. I found that out just before we came to the came to the TV presentation. So, you know, that's a that's a super important stat. Yeah, that's a great sight, obviously, seeing the Bisons on the field after a victory on homecoming Saturday afternoon this past week. And, Coach, some superlatives to go back and look. And we talked about Dennis Buckner. We started the highlights with a forced fumble by him. And, right. and the third quarter, his interception, I thought, was huge after the onside kick. And then it started what was the second 99-yard drive. You don't have many games where you have two 99-yard drives uh, no, in a football game. No doubt. Uh, that was critical because because they gained the, the onside kick. Uh, if they had taken that ball in and scored and made it a two-score game, I think you know we would have we'd been dealing with a different opponent. But the fact that Dennis got the pick and then we took it 99 yards in three plays, that was pretty much the nail in the coffin as far as the afternoon was concerned. And Darius Lane. Darius Lane rewarded after his special teams play on Saturday. He is the GAC Special Teams Player of the Week after that 82-yard uh, punt return for a touchdown. Couldn't go to a more deserving guy because not only does Darius do great with the ball in his hands in the return area, he's also one of our most dynamic special teams guys on kickoff team and, and punt coverage. He's always around the ball. He never takes a playoff. He's one of our, he's one of our most valuable football players without question. All right, so the Bisons with a victory on Saturday, 51-6 to the final score, but we are not finished on Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. Stay with us. We'll come back and hear from some Bison players, get a question for Coach, and look ahead to our trip to Ada, Oklahoma after this. A full life measured in seats starts with the right ones early on. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Learn how to prevent deaths and injuries by using the right car seat for your child's age and size. 
All right, you ready for some baseball trivia? Let's do it. What year produced the most no-hit games in the big leagues? Seven no-hitters in 1990. Wow, that's right. Now a question that's not trivial. How many children will witness bullying this year? Huh. The answer? Three out of four. 75 percent? That's wow. right. How many of them will say something? Kids want to help, but don't know how. Teach them how to stop bullying and be more than a bystander at stopbullying.gov. Welcome back to Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. It's always great to be with Coach, and it's always great to have an opportunity to go into uh, the, the locker room and talk with the players after the game as well. And we had a chance to catch up with Olapeni Magale, Dennis Buckner, and Jonathan Coleman after the football game on Saturday. Man, I'm just so proud of us. Uh, we came out ready to ball. Coach told us don't underestimate any teams, and we came out with the same intensity as we did last week, and it was just a good job all around. The whole line did tremendous, and had some good blocking up front, open the, open the holes for a lot of running backs, and yeah, we all had a good game. And talk about the honor of being named the Coach John Proc homecoming most valuable player. Um, I, I couldn't do any of that without my team. It, it, it's a team award. I, the old linemen deserve it just as much as I do, and it, it feels good. It was a good win. <laughs> we just knew we had to go out, you know, stay focused. You know, defense kept their poise. Offenses kept rolling, and we knew it was a uh, you know, they was going to come try to upset. So we just wanted to go out there and win a hidden battle. I just said, I'm not getting, I'm not getting lost this time. Uh, Northwest Oklahoma, it was the same type of play where the ball was in the air. And I, I lost that one. But this time I seen the ball, I said, I'm getting it. You know, so I came down with it. How excited is that locker room to win on homecoming? Oh, we, were, we were very excited. For, you know, I got a bunch of guys that, you know, that love to win, you know, love to fight, love to battle, you know, so. Right now, we're going to take this win, and next week, we're going to get ready for uh, ECU. This one was a fun ball game, too. Every week, we, we work hard, and we got a mindset just to win. And I mean, with this family, I, I know the guys will win. It's a real tight brotherhood, and I know we'll always have each other's back. Every victory is the same. And we're trying to get to the ring. So, I mean, I couldn't do it without my team. I give them the glory first. But I had a pretty decent game, five tackles. I feel like I could have had a lot more, but. With the team. I mean, the, the ones I didn't get my teammates got, I did miss a lot of tackles, so we're, we're, we're just winning. Coach, what I love about Harding is is how we go back and we, we honor. You talk about former players, former coaches. We talked about Coach Allison uh, last week. And I know uh, John Proc, there was a reception after the game right. that Coach Moe was excited to go to. And I think right. it's outstanding that we, we get to name the most outstanding player of the homecoming game uh, for Coach Proc. There's no doubt about it. Coach Proc has uh, meant so much in the lives of of his players and he's got so many of his former players that are coaching. I happen to be one of those. Uh, you know, Ken Bissell just penned a book uh, in Coach Proc's honor called Many Sons to Glory and I think that's very appropriate uh, to describe how Coach Proc related to his players. Uh, he treated his players like they were his sons and sometimes that wasn't always pleasant. I, I was on the re receiving end of some of his discipline, uh, especially early in my career, but uh, you know, there's no doubt in my mind ever that Coach Proc loved me and he wanted the best for me and he, uh, you know, he treated me like one of his sons and, and those of us that played for him feel that strongly about him. And so the fact that you know, our locker room is named in his honor and that uh, the homecoming MVP is named in his honor is really special to us. Talk about having two rushers go over 100 yards. We had not talked about that. And when I saw Alapetti Magalay's numbers right there, and also Romo Westbrook over 100 yards. Without a doubt. And, you know, in this offense, if your B back is being that successful, then you're probably going to have a pretty good day. Uh, and, and then you throw in Matt Tennyson, and I don't know how many Matt ended up rushing for, but I know he had an over 60 yard touchdown. And, and I, I believe I heard someone say, that our B-back position accounted for well over 300 yards of offense on Saturday. If that's the case, this is, it's going to be a really good day as far as running the football is concerned because if we've got the B-back going, we're going to get the rest of our, uh, our running game going too. And when it, you know, you're working all three phases, the B-back, the quarterback, and the pitch, uh, and they can't stop the fullback, then you know, it's a good sign. And we are in week number nine now. The Bisons are getting ready for week number nine. And obviously, health is always in question, Coach. And uh, this week's question, I think, talks about, you know, how do you keep everybody fresh and battle through the bangs and uh, the bumps and the bruises? 
I'm Josh Nickerson from Long Island, New York. Uh, Coach Huck, what's the overall uh, health of your team after eight games? Well, that's a good question, and overall it's very good. Uh, you know, we do have some guys that are banged up right now, as you would expect. One of the things that we've worked really hard to, to do on our football team is to have quality depth, and uh, that's a reflection of the hard work and recruiting that our coaches do, led by Coach Paul Simmons. And uh, we do have good depth, and we've had to use it this year in several situations. You know, we lost Jensen Jackson early in the year. We lost Matt Kane and Devon Carter for the year uh, in the defensive line, and, and those guys have continued to, to play and play extremely well. Uh, you know, we, we work really hard in practice, making sure that we are ready for the ball game, but we try not to bang on our players too much during the course of the week. Uh, you know, Tuesday's a heavy day for us and it, it does have some contact but we spend most of the rest of the week uh, just you know working on making sure that we have our assignments taken care of that we're we're paying attention to detail it's been a good, pretty good formula for us yeah and I, I think when you talk about the depth I'm not sure that everyone realizes just how much depth you have up front with that offensive line because you get to play quite a few guys during the during a game right. uh, that come in and, and keep each other fresh Right, and those guys are always the unsung heroes of the football team because uh, you know they don't sack the quarterback. The, usually, when uh, they mess up, it's very obvious, and uh, we do have great depth there. We we played a lot of guys through the course of the year. Coach Kevin Chisholm, who works with our O line, does a great job of keeping those guys fresh, and it also is great for the future of this football team that we've got guys every year who get quality reps in quality situations. And in our opinion, that's how you build a program. And so we're, we're pleased with where we are from that standpoint. We do know that the national polls have come out. The Bison's up to number 16. <coughs> now the national polls and getting ready to go to Ada, Oklahoma, to play a very good East Central ball club on Saturday. Coach, talk about uh, East Central. Well, they're 6-2. and two. They've lost two football games, one to Henderson and one to Washington. That's nothing to be ashamed of. A uh, very talented football team. I have a lot of respect for Coach McCarty and, and uh, his program. They, they play really hard. They've always played us really tough. Uh, the last time we went to ECU was in 2011, and it, it didn't turn out real well for us. Uh, you know, those guys are also, this is two weeks in a row, we're playing a team that's on a four-game winning streak. And uh, they've developed a lot of momentum right now, and, uh, you know, they're, they, I'm sure that they're going to be ready for the Bisons, and we've got to, we've got to bring our A game uh, come this Saturday. All right, Coach, always great to be with you. Have a great week, and we'll see you again next week. Thank you, Billy. That's all for this week's edition of Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. So glad to have you with us, and we'll see you next time.